Thank you for watching this introduction to the diaphragm pump. We will go through the specifics of how it operates as well as its traits, uses and installation advice. This comes after my series on technology for treating water and wastewater. Consequently, view the prior video on the topic if you haven't already. First of all, let's start with the definition of diaphragm pump. The first link is in the video description below. Don't forget to subscribe right away by hitting the subscribe button on the right side of your screen. The diaphragm pump is a type of positive displacement pump that pumps liquid by expanding the diaphragm through the use of proper non-return check valves and the reciprocating action of a rubber or Teflon diaphragm. Fluid is sucked into the pump compressing as the pumping chamber's volume is increased. The volume is reduced and some fluid is expelled by the diaphragm. The injection of chemicals such as coagulants, polymeric acids and bases for pH control, process additives and many more is one of these pumps most popular uses. They are mostly utilized in facilities that treat sewage and water. They make it possible to administer a variety of chemical additions. They are also employed in the production of oil and gases chemical processes. They can reliably inject methanol, corrosion inhibitors, and other corrosive materials in the hardest conditions in the most isolated places, making them perfect for onshore oil and natural gas production. These pumps can be used in a variety of different industries, including the production of pharmaceuticals, power generation, and the food and beverage industry. Let's now list the parts that make up this pump. A head pump body which can be made of polyvinyl chloride, stainless steel or polyfluid vanillidine makes up a diaphragm pump. The service conditions and the type of fluid to be handled decide the building materials. A flexible pulsing diaphragm, often composed of polyethylene, is another component of the pump. Two check valves, which are frequently made of ceramic balls and sealed with elastomer o-rings, allow the flow to enter from the suction and exit from the discharge. The drive system converts the driver's rotation motion into reciprocating movement. Diaphragm pumps come in two varieties, mechanically and fluidly operated. Despite the fact that mechanical drives are easy and inexpensive, they are only appropriate for very mild-duty applications due to their short diaphragm life. Diaphragms for hydraulic drives can be single or double. The most typical and practical diaphragm for the majority of services is one unit. However, a double diaphragm can be required for particularly hazardous services. A driver and the flow adjustments are the pump's final two parts. Although pneumatic and hydraulic drivers with variable speeds are also used for flow modifications, the pump is powered by an AC constant speed motor. The pump's flow rate can be changed by altering stroke length or stroking speed. The majority of diaphragm pumps come with a micrometer screw adjustment like the one in this picture. To change the pump flow rate in response to a process signal, the micrometer can also be swapped out with an electronic or pneumatic actuator. Let's now discuss the properties of the pump. The pump's flow can often be controlled by adjusting the motor's rotation speed or pump stroke. Pumps using a diaphragm metering system deliver precise quantities each stroke. The flow is variable. When the diaphragm is on the downstroke and the motor is run at very low rates to achieve small volumes, there is no flow. Long stretches go by without any liquid being supplied. In fact, the pump doesn't actually provide fluid for half of each shaft revolution. However, increasing the motor speed also increases the frequency of injection. For situations where a good mixing is required, a high frequency is used. By adjusting the stroke length, precise flow control is also possible. By measuring flow at two stroke settings, graphing both locations, and draw a straight line across them, other flow rates versus the stroke may be predicted with accuracy. As you can see, the peak flow falls as the stroke length is increased. The installation of the pump is crucial to its successful operation. Here are some suggestions that you might utilize while designing and installing a diaphragm pump. The suction line must be installed with as little length as possible. Use a pulse snapper to reduce the pump's pulsing output when the pipe is longer than 6 meters. Also avoid loops in the suction line to prevent air bubbles from forming in non-degassing fluid with a viscosity close to water. Be careful when mounting the pump on the tank. 
Note the palm's highest possible suction height. Construct the suction line with filter for media that tends to slid, keeping the suction valve a few millimeters above the potential level of sedimentation. Lastly, install a calibration chamber that will allow for precise site calibration and evaluating a pump's output for discharge. Installing a relief valve right after the pump discharge will shield the dosing pump in the discharge line from excessive pressure buildup. The counter pressure at the injection point and the dosing medium's pressure at the pump section valve must have a positive pressure difference of at least one bar. Install a pressure loading valve in the discharge line if this cannot be assured. Additionally, you must employ a pulsation damper as close to the pump as feasible to lessen discharge pulsing. It would improve the performance of an inline device such as a flow meter or relief valve in the discharge pipe construction. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I thank you very much for watching and I hope this has helped you and you have enjoyed it. If so, then please don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video and also comment your suggestions about what equipment should I talk about in my next video. Goodbye.